Hello everyone, welcome to my model railway, which has recently been started about five, six months ago. Um, this is my, as you can see, this is my first video. So it's really just um, sort of like an introduction and a layout update kind of video. Well, it's not, yeah, not really an update, is it? It's really just, really is an introduction. Although I'll probably call the next video update one or we'll just update and then one after that update two or something um so yeah so it's a it's double o gauge four millimeter scale um as you can see it's reasonably small it's on one board um it's a mobile layout so i can move it around um i don't store it on my desk though i store it just outside my room um it's based, um, it's based on a fictional Sussex branch line in 1936. Um, the, the idea of the branch line is that it was um, constructed for a race course, which is also fictional. Um, and the branch um, provides access to that race course. Um, and, and it also serves um, a couple of small-ish kind of villages and a couple of halts. Um, as it leads on to the main line. So the, the idea is that the trains from here will um, uh, will start and end at Eastbourne. Um, and the line was also electrified. Um, I've forgotten the year. Uh, it's all fictional, but I have, I have kind of decided exactly what happens before I started it. Um, so I'm trying to keep it reasonably prototypical um, as, as I can um, so I'll just give you a kind of slightly closer view of the layouts of what there is of it so this this uh, this platform here this is my main platform I'll call it platform one um, this is the yeah, like I say, the main platform. This one's going to be electrified. Platform one will be electrified. Um, this through the tunnel is to Eastbourne. Uh, there's also a there is there's also um, a curve on the um, there's also a curve in the other direction where it meets the main line. So you could run trains to Ashford, and the curve is also electrified. Um, Six hundred and fifty volts DC third rail. So occasionally you will find first generation electrics up here, but generally only uh, when there are races on or events. Uh, yeah, so that's platform one. It's, I think it's a roughly about, roughly a kind of four coach platform. Um, platform two is over here. Now this platform originally wasn't going to be a platform. This is originally going to be a freight siding, but I decided to make it another platform because I thought it was just a bit unrealistic. Because all the photographs you look at in books and all the videos you watch on YouTube, um, you never really see a branch line that would, you know, that would have been built for a good reason like this. You never really see it with just one platform. Um, in fact, the, 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 pla the pl even platform one originally was just a two coach platform, um, and I kind of realised that I should have really extend it and make it a, just to make it a little, a little bit more prototypical. So yeah, so this was originally just going to be a freight siding, um, not even any um, coal, uh, coal shed. I'm talking about uh, goods shed at all. Just like a siding with wagons, and the idea is that trains would come in. Um, the loco would run round its train of wagons and then shunt it into the siding and then um, go off light engine or, or do whatever it needs to do. Um, but I've, yeah, so I'm not doing that anymore. So this is going to be my second platform. The idea of this is that it, it provides extra capacity for when there are races or special events on at the race course, which is nearby, very nearby actually, but not actually in my lab, not actually being modelled. Um, and this platform will also be electrified. Um, this 
siding here is a locomotive stable. Um, it could also be used as a head shunt for the sidings, which I'm going to put in here. I'm going to have two, uh, basically I'm going to replace this turnout with a, um, what's it called? A double slip. So I'll have um, a road coming oh, out like this and it will divide somewhere up here using the same turnout. The roads will then come down here I'll have a good shed somewhere here and a little coal siding, just a very short thing, just up here with a kind of a little coal yard. Um, and so that, so this road here could be used as a head shunt for, um, for trains accessing um, or shunting around wagons in the, um, in the goods yard without needing to go onto the main line. Um, so, so far, actually one thing I'll, I'll, I'll to mention also is that I've, I've actually decided a couple of weeks ago to extend the layout because currently you can only really run round, uh, these are 40, these are, these are about 48 foot coaches, you can just about run round the three with that loop just about it's a bit tight it doesn't it's not particularly realistic because it's so tight so what i want to do is to extend basically move this point here further down so that i can run round up to three of those recently released um 58 foot lswr um bogey coach rebuilds monzo rebuilds um i think generally each Generally, the branch trains will consist of um, of two coaches, generally, but sometimes it'll be three. For example, summer Saturdays. Um, summer Saturdays, um, the branch gets two trains per hour, as opposed to a train every 90 minutes, um, normally. Uh, yeah, so I'm planning on adding on to the board, baseboard, if you like, about 25 centimetres, which will give me enough space to move this uh, move this point down. I'll keep the head shunt the same length so that I can so that that, that will accommodate a T9 or a schools class, which will occasionally visit the line, but not not regularly. So this will be exactly the same, but basically moved further down um, over here. Um, and this also means that this platform can be extended, which just makes it a little bit more realistic. Um, I think generally you don't really, even on branch lines in the 1930s, I mean, you didn't really find any platforms that were this short. So even, even what I'm extending it to probably isn't like really prototypical, but I think it, it is more so at the length I will be extending it to. Um, so yeah, and here, oh yeah, so obviously this is as far as I've got, sorry, I'll, I'll point so you know what I'm talking about. This is as far as I've got with the, um, scenery. I just want to build it all up and get the profile right. So it's the right shape. I'm just going to show you the shape there. So you get a general idea of what I'm going for. Um, I just want to build up the profile of um, of the cutting so that I'm completely happy with it before I start um, before I start plastering. These were these were originally a lot steeper. This cut the cutting was originally a lot steeper. So it originally would have come up like this to here and I actually built it. Um, built the card and put the plaster down. Um, for this side only here um, and it just didn't look very realistic so I've decided to completely redo it um, um, and the same for this side as well I've lowered it down so it's just a lot um, so it's just a lot well it's, just, so it's not as steep 
I just think it looks a lot more realistic. Um, yeah, so I've not finished. I've not finished um, this bit around here. The idea is that this piece can move away. It can just come away like that. So that these scenery pieces are, the idea is that they're kind of modular so that I can remove them. Um, they're not fixed down at the moment. They're just held in by gravity. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much it at the moment. At the moment, I'm kind of focusing on this area up here. I'm just trying to get this, uh, this end piece, the right shape um, in terms of these supports and um, just making sure that it all, f making sure that where the joint, where the scenery, where the different pieces of scenery join together, um, that the joins are disguised by um, where, uh, for example, where you have where you would have brick meeting grass. I don't really want any obvious lines. There will be lines, um, and I've seen other modern railways exhibitions with, you know, you can see the joins. It doesn't really. I mean. It isn't really messy, you can kind of ignore that. But I do want to reduce um, how obvious the lines are. So, actually I'll show you what I'm doing. I've, I've made these up, these pieces of card. So these, the card along here is really just a kind of a support for probably, um, probably plastic card eventually, that I'll paint and then weather and you know, all the usual stuff. Um, and I've made these pieces out here, these kind of retaining walls. They're going to kind of go in something like that. And again, these will be um, covered in plastic card or something like that eventually. Um, and all of this area in here will be filled with what well, would be grass or kind of down here um, instead of the wall, the brickwork going all the way up to the end, which of course wouldn't really happen in real life. And um, so I've spent quite a lot of time thinking about that doing it and then thinking, oh, I don't actually like it that much and then redoing it. So I think the way I'm doing it now, I'm fairly happy with. Um, yeah, so, oh, you're yeah, using code 75, fine scale, I think it's called Pico track. Um, I have adjusted the spacing. Looking back, really, I should, probably should have just used some of that, I think it's called CNL. Um, double O track, I probably should have just used that, but this was a, going back six months or so, I wasn't really too aware of that then. But anyway, what I've done is I've increased the sleeper spacing, I made a tool up. It takes a long time to lay as well actually like this, because you've got to make sure all the sleepers are kind of roughly parallel, um, which is good in a way because it means that the sleepers aren't all completely parallel. Um, but so basically I just cut the webbing underneath and then space them out. The points, obviously there's not much I can do about the sleeper spacing on the points. But again, I've seen other layouts that have done this with the, um, the sleeper spacing on the normal track and not for the points. And by the time you've, by the time you've painted the rails, painted the sleepers, ballasted it, weathered it, it's, it's, it's fine. Maybe next time, I'll do it differently, but this time I really just wanted to kind of get on with it and not spend too much time worrying about the most realistic track I can possibly do because this is my this is my first layout. So um, yeah, so they are all Electrofrog, and they all have polarity switches, and I've also connected these two rails here for greater reliability. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it really. Um, I won't go into my stock too much at the moment, I've, um, as in I won't show it to you. I mean, this this uh, this train here is pretty much a typical branch line train to pre-grouping um, bogey coaches with a terrier. Usually, usually trains would be hauled by terriers or M7, 044 tanks. 
um, and you get the other the kind of occasional classes visit but generally it's one of those kind of one of those two tanks with a couple of bogey coaches um, so yes that's pretty much it really I'm gonna have um, this, this area here I'd like to have a a signal box I think that'll look quite quite good a, a fairly a reasonably small signal box a bit a bit like um, a bit like at Ventnor station how that used to be so the trains would kind of dramatically emerge from the um, the tunnel in the cliff except this isn't cliff of course this is just kind of like general kind of hills um, even this tunnel even the, the hills the um, the ground here would only kind of be at this level highest really it's not like it's not it's not really particularly dramatic um, but yeah so I like a signal box here um, maybe a little path that kind of goes across or something like that. I haven't thought about that too deeply yet um, I don't want to I don't want to kind of fill it too much with different things going on. Um, generally, I think I'll keep these these embankments here kind of just long, kind of grass. Uh, maybe a fence, maybe some um, some livestock or a path or a couple of trees. Um, maybe the edge of a part of a building or something on this up here, perhaps. Uh, but we'll see. Um, so yeah. So that's uh, that's my first uh, update slash intro. Um, keep keep your eye out because every month or month, a couple of months or every so often, I'll I'll do um, an update video and let you see how it's progressing if you're interested. So um, please do subscribe and like and comment and all the other things you can do nowadays. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.